What's going on everybody, it's Blackjack. Welcome back to Monster Prom. We're going back in today to not the second term, but the first term because there is still something I need to take care of if I want to see the other possible secret endings. I've learned that I need to romance all six. We've only got five more left thanks to Ashole who went ahead and took care of um, Liam? No. Yeah, wait. No, we still don't have Liam, do we? No, I took care of Liam, and then she got Damien, but she got a secret in ending for Damien. So now all we gotta do is get Scott. So back to the first term we go. We gotta find our lovable Scott, uh, someone, uh, the, the jockey boy, someone to go perfect, brainsy boy. Brainsy boy it is then, you know what? Uh, what, what what's what's better than, than some good old fashioned jockey wrestling wild nights together front with, with Scott and brainsy boy? Yeah. Yeah, see, look, he agrees. And we had yet to experience its ultimate challenge, the monster prom. I remember it clearly. Three weeks left, and I skipped all of this. <laughs> Alrighty, cool. If you had to have sex with an animal, which animal would it be? A great white shark. If I have to fuck an animal, let's at least make it a story, a story worth telling. Uh, a swan, they're classy. Plus, it reminds me of that myth of Leda and the swan. So it's at least bestiality standards it has. Uh, so at least by bestiality standards, it has a certain chic appeal. A human being, because I'm the kind of douchebag who loves to find loopholes and stupid questions like this one. I mean, I mean, I kind of want to click that now, just in spite of this game. Um, hmm, I guess that's, this would be fun. A swan, they're classy. But then I don't know what this is. Does this mean, I guess, I guess this is because this is smart. And this would be, let's go fun. Well, that's charming. Okay. All right. I'll take that. All right. Be a visionary. What will be the next big me uh, social media uh, craze be? Bullshit. It's Facebook. But each time someone shares news that isn't supported by real facts, they're taxed, and the money goes to the people exposed to that bullshit. I kind of want to just pick that one. Greek Agoras. Uh, as Greek Agoras. Like, literal Greek Agoras uh, reinstating in our cities. Um, places where philosophy and arts are discussed by the greater minds. That's social media I want to log into. Robert. From now on, a social yaku guy named Robert will do everything he's commanded to by, uh, through the app by its users. Oh, that's right, because they drop vowels in their apps. I'm going to go with bullshit, because I think that's kind of fun. Uh, okay, wealthy. I could have gotten more charm. What's the sexiest type of knowledge a lover can ha have? How to set this up on fire? Obscures 80s movie trivia? They were saw Dizzy Song? Sports things. All right, there we go. That's Scott. <laughs> we found him. All right, Brainsy Boy, we're going to get you some love in your life. Um... Sure. Some big old beefy brain for you to chew on, although there's not much brain there, honestly. It's Scott we're talking about. Alright, um... I say we keep going. I, I think I think charm and maybe fun are the two things I'm probably gonna need. I guess, yeah, let's go charm. That day an epic dodgeball match takes place. Everything seems lost, but you deliver an inspirational speech that fuels your team spirit. And then, oh, sorry, no, 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 resume. Um... I just gotta skip it naturally. Okay, plus two charm. After you're counting and recounting your money, hoping to find an extra dollar, when suddenly... Hey bro, Brazy Boy! Look, look here! Look what I have! Is it shiny? Scott holds aloft a roll of duct tape, which you concede is indeed shiny. <laughs> Listen, I'm not saying that we tied, tied up crazy Marvin the... Martin the Werebear Janitor, I'm just saying this tape is crazy strong. If you wanted to wreck uh, some havoc on the school, Crazy Martin might be a little tied up. Thank the triple godness we spent months tracking that. <laughs> our thing? It's so cool, right? We have a thing and it's our thing and it's the best thing and it's ours. We must save the world. You fools, that's the duct tape of retribution. It's the only adhesive that can hold... Balthazar, the destroyer, whom we must detain in order to save the world. Oh, well, saving the world is good. I just liked it because it was a cool shiny thing. You can have it. No, wait, Scott, they're probably just making that shit up because they want to take the cool thing from us. Balthazar, the destroyer? Obviously fake. Why have I never heard of him? We had a three hour long lecture on Balthazar, the destroyer in homeroom yesterday. You're right, Damien. They must be lying. I think we would have remembered that. You were at sports practice and Damien was asleep at his desk. 
After we heard about the threat Baltazar posed, we took it upon ourselves to journey deep into the dungeons of Hollis Ma and to bring back the holy duct tape of retribution, only to discover it already gone. Oh, the dungeon of Hollis Ma. That's where we were. We took a wrong turn on our English curses and got totally lost. <laughs> Somehow we were in. Somehow we were in some kind of maze. Anyway, we saw that sick tape and thought we might as well take it. And now it's fucking ours and you can't have it. Ugh, could you be any more oblivious? Hand over the tape and we'll be forced to use force and take it by force. Yikes, looks like this situation is getting out of control. You better step in before someone or some duct tape gets hurt. Alright, don't worry, Damien. You can keep the duct tape of retribution for your own nefarious purposes. Coven, why don't you use the scotch tape of, hey, cut that out instead. Scott, you really don't care about the duct tape, right? You just like having a cool shiny thing. But watch me use my sweet negotiation skills to get, wait for it, two cool shiny things. I don't know what this is doing. Um... I feel like it's meant, it's asking me to pick Sky, but I don't know if this, okay, it works, perfect. Seriously? We said we need a magic artifact to save the world from the likes of the Baltazar and you're, you're making us barter for it? God, you guys are really, you really, guys really are pathetic. The Coven Leader, Joy, lay, you're like 90% sure is her name, although they kind of feel like one person to you, rummages around her pockets before withdrawing two shiny things. Here, here are two shiny things. A broken glow stick from the last Dark Arts Con we attended, and this ceremonial dagger. Damn, that is one nice looking dagger, and I'm into it. What kind of fierce quest did you have to com uh, complete to get a hold of that baby? Actually, I just bought it at a Dark Arts and Craft store. <laughs> You bought it? At a store? Awesome, bro. That's even more amazing. Do you know how hard it is to go to a store and buy the thing you're supposed to without losing the money or eating the money or thinking that you lost the money and finding out that you ate the money? How have you not been expelled yet? Do we have a trade or not? Hooray! Yes! Two shiny things! Hooray! The trade is swiftly made and the coven leaves to go save the world or whatever. The important thing is that Scott and Damien are now in possession of two shiny things. And from the equal shiny smile Scott is flashing you, you're thinking you might be in possession of a prom date. You gain plus two boldness and plus one fun. That works. Hey, there we go. We're not doing so bad. All right. Week one noon. Let's um, see. Sure. All right, brainsy boy. Oh, hey, I remember you from the title screen, but I don't think I can do anything with you yet. Maybe I should go sit with Scott and Polly. All right, Scott and Polly are sitting together in a tree, K-I-S-S-I-N-G, laughing their metaphorical asses off. Do Damien, do Damien! Mm, Grr, I'm Damien, look at my stupid red face. I use violence to cover up the fact that I've been brought up to be a reaver, or uh, to be, uh, to brought up to reveal a toxic version of masculinity, which has alienated me from my own true emotions. Haha, <laughs> you sound exactly like him. Okay, okay, you do Vera. I'm Vera, I'm very smart, and my hair is pretty, and all my friends look up to me because I am a strong, independent woman. Scott, I'm not sure you understand how impressions work. I'm not Scott, I'm Vera. You can tell because I just said my name just now. <laughs> okay, what about you, Brainsy Boy? Got any good impressions? Just one, but it's a real doozy. Woof woof, it's me, Scott, a dog boy who is bad at impressions. Look at me, I'm Polly, look at me go. I feel like that's insulting Scott, and I feel like this is me making fun of Polly, so I'm gonna go with this one. There we go. I do not talk like that! <laughs> yeah, you do. You talk like that all the time. Okay, maybe, but why is he running around the cafeteria rubbing his butt in everyone's lasagna? Because he's twerking, Polly. Don't you recognize twerking when you see it? That's not twerking. Twerking doesn't require driving from table to table in a hot pink golf cart. That's... What? How is that even an impression of me? Actually, you know what? Polly would probably twerk around. <laughs> you know what? It's perfect, actually. Are you saying you don't wish you were driving a hot pink golf cart and putting your butt in people's lasagna right now? Fine, out of my way. 
While Polly's busy making love to everyone's lunch trays, you enjoy a quiet meal alone with Scott. So romantic. That works. Hey, there we go. We, 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 we laid it on. We, we, we got a little groove going on here. All right, let's see. Um, I don't. Hmm. I guess I should go and get some fun. Maybe let's 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 do that. Um, fun is um fun is outdoors, right? Yep. Cool. All right, that day during recess, you start a half hour rave that goes full crazy. We up? Uh, no 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 no. We're not doing that again. All right, plus two fun. Here we go. There you are, swiping through potential monster match dates when you spot Scott pacing and muttering to himself in distress. You can hear uh you can't bear to see someone so adorable in so much pain, so you might as well try to ease it however you can. Oh, hi there, Brainsy boy. Do you think I'm adorable? Yes, in fact, you were literally just thinking of that. Anyway, the other day I was out in the forest trying to find a quiet place and large branch to do some pull-ups before the big sports game. But suddenly I was approached by all these talking forest animals. They were pretty big for forest animals, and I'd never seen animals that can talk like that. I mean, other than us werewolves, if you're counting us as animals. And they were just so fuzzy and adorable. But they said they were... Sorry. They said they were impressed by, uh, by my, uh, by my pull-ups and my muscles and that I was even more adorable. So the l nice little forest animals with giant heads made me their king. Which was really, really flattering. I just don't know anything about ruling. I'm not sure if I'm good enough to be a king. Aw, poor Scott. It's up to you to help him rally. Scott, a good king is a strong ruler. Physically strong. If you can't, if you can do a hundred push-ups, you can be a good king for sure. True royalty has been inside of you all along. Why else would your eyes be royal blue? Hmm. I feel like that's charming. And it's the best stat that I have. Yes! Alright, we got it. My eyes, my eyes, my eyes are royal blue. Liam said they were Cerulean, but I always knew that, that that wasn't a real word. Clever Liam, he's clearly testing me. So my eyes are royal blue because I had royalty inside me all this time. Does that mean I have like a little blue king or queen inside of me? It, it is like my true self. I always suspected such big muscles couldn't be of this world, so good old Scott is just a mecca for the little blue person to fight against evil. I wonder what my real royal name could be. Sir Beef Wellington? Lady McBeef? No, Lady McMuscles. I should ask my loyal furries about that. Furries is what I decided to call those giant furry talking forest animals for short. Oh no, wait a minute. Thanks for helping me get my confidence back, Brainsy Boy. You should come meet my furry friend sometime. Well, we're going there. Well, you always wanted to hang out with Scott. Not too sure about these circumstances, but it's better than not hanging out at all. You gain plus two smarts and plus one fun. All right. All right, we're, we're on a roll right now. Loving this. Um, sure. Boom, 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 boom. Well, I'm guessing, well, because I don't know. Oh, so I can't go to the gym and I can't improve my charm because, um... Uh, I think her name is like, I can't remember what the shopkeeper's name is, but if I do need to get an item in the future, I say let's go to the library and just uh, make some money. That should work. Alright, let's do money. Scott strolls by, happily munching on something Liam, uh, munching on something. Liam gapes at him, appalled. What on earth are you eating? <clears throat> what on earth are you eating, Scott? <laughs> this delicious new flavor of Fangles potato chips. Maximum Ultimates ulti Double Barbecue Massacre. Really? Because it looks like a raw severed goat head inside of a cardboard tube. <laughs> oh yeah, I guess it does. Could have sworn it was a potato chips. Still tasty though. Tasty? Tasty? Does wanton environmental destruction sound tasty to you? I don't know. Is that a kind of jerky? <laughs> no, Scott. Don't you realize that in order to harvest these goat heads, Bengals and Co. decapitate millions of innocent goats every year? But what do they do with the bodies of the goats? Nothing. It's a horrendously wasteful master. Um, uh, well, wasteful practice. Oh no! All those poor headless goat bodies running around and bumping into things. We have to stop them. 
Wait, really? I was just trying to make you feel guilty. I didn't actually have a plan of action, but if someone were to suggest one... Assemble an army of vengeful, undead goat torsos. <laughs> Tors I can't talk. Assemble an army of vengeful, undead go goat torsos. Wow, that, that. why am I tripping up on that? Write an extremely mean blog post. Hmm. Assemble an array of vengeful... I feel like this is a choice between them. Because this is either... This feels like smart. And this sounds like fun. Or I could just completely get it wrong and just have it be smart. I don't want to know what the other one was. Ah, yes. Necromancy. The ultimate tool in the protester's arsenal. Ooh! Ooh! Can I ride a goat? Can I? Huh? Of course you can ride a goat. In fact, given your size, you'll probably need to ride several. What's a several? Is it a really big goat? No time to explain basic concepts, Scott. We've got an invasion to work straight. As long as you're reanimating things, you reanimate some severed goat's head too. They'll eat anything, which totally helps you clean your room. You gain, you gain plus two creativity and plus one smarts. Alright. So far, so good. No mess ups, let's um, go and sure. see who we should... Oh, I thought Scott wasn't here today. I was getting ready to say, I was like, oh no, he's teaching us over there in the corner. But the wolf pack is over here. Um, I guess I should be going to, uh, just keep going to Scott. As you approach Scott and Miranda's table, you see that the entire table is covered in exotic silverware. Ooh, what's this one for? That's the forking spoon. It's a, it's a spoon for picking up your forks so that you don't have to touch them with your fingers. Uh, that one. That's the tuning fork. It's for, it's for making sure all your other silverware is tuned to A minor as is proper. What, what about this one? That's the dairy knife. It's for milk. <laughs> wow. Do people ever invent new silverwares? All the time, but none of the time. Uh, none of them are any good. It would take a genius of true subtlety to improve on the existing canon. A true genius, a genius of true subtlety. Genius and subtlety are your middle fucking names. You suggest the ultimate new silverware. The salad harp, or ants. Hmm. The salad harp sounds like creative. Hands sound smart. Or is this a decision between that's what gets that's what tricks me up about these. I'm gonna go hands. Cause cause Scott would be down with that. Yes, I knew it! My favorite silverware! Eat gads, how crude! I know, right? My only favorite are silverwares are face and mouth. Scott, I think you're misunderstanding the purpose of silverware. No, I don't think so. Look! Scott reaches into his backpack and pulls out two silver hands, a silver face and a silver mouth. He holds the hands in his hands and the face in his mouth and devours his lunch in a highly con uh, counterintuitive way. I stand corrected. You're not standing, you're sitting. Anyway, now I gotta put on some ointment. All that silver is really bad for my skin. Ah, I get it, because he's a werewolf. <laughs> Scott lets you put the ointment on him. Nice. Alright, let's do this. Um, sure. Okay. Let's go. You know what? Let's continue racking up the fun. That day you go with oh yeah 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 none of this matters. Just keep going. And being you're practicing your very best monster match when you hear the sounds of an argument. Which is so strange in these sacred hallowed halls of education. Lol JK, can you imagine? Brainsy boy! They may be their king! And they deserve and they deserve the best, most wonderful king there ever was! And I'm gonna work as hard as I can to be that king, no matter what it takes! Scott, you realize they're not cute little baby animals in need of a king, right? They're furries. I know they're furry, Vera, and I'm the one who told you that. No, Scott, they're furries. It's a kink. Yes, Vera, there are many, there are many kinks in my plan. <laughs> that's, that's, that's really good. That's why I need to work them out to be the best ruler. Forget it. I'm sorry, Vera. Excuse, 
Excuse me, did you say you need uh, help being a good ruler? I know all about that. Being a king is easy as daddy always says. Only live peasants can stage a rebellion. Oh, Miranda, I'm not really sure. Fear is your most important weapon. It's kind of true. Uh, your second most important weapon is actual weapons. Torture soup spoons, razor teacups, a knife on fire, you know, the usual. I don't know, Miranda. I appreciate the advice, but I don't think that's the kind of king I want to be. Nonsense. I'll go get you the butter knife shuriken right now. Whoa. It just seems so unnecessary. There must be a better, kinder way to rule. Right, Brainsy boy? I want them to have a happy time under Scott the First. Oh, he's the first. They've been so, so nice to me. They've written me beautiful songs. I mean, Scott, I don't think you really know what you're getting yourself into, buddy. <laughs> Which are about my adventures, but most, but they are being nice. But most of them are the sort of things I definitely have not done. And they, <laughs> and they made amazing drawings of me. Which are very, very generous in their proportions. I just think they deserve the best leader. Normal read uh, rulers make their subjects pay taxes, but what if you pay taxes to them? I don't, I don't think that's how taxes work. Flag time! You can't rule a kingdom with no flag. Without a flag, it would just be a bunch of flagless people. Um. Okay, I'm worried here. Cause. I'm guaranteeing that this is money, and money's at a nine. But I can't tell if this is... I can't tell if this is creative or fun. And if this is fun, I lose. If this is creative, I win. Actually, you know what? That doesn't sound that fun, because you would just be creating a flag. Maybe that's why it's creative. Got it! Yes, okay. Paying taxes to my furries? Sure, that makes perfect sense. If our president paid us a tax for leading us, I would definitely love that president. You and Scott combine your wealth to prepare the taxes, but you have to pay those furries too for some reason. Scott leaves all excited with some of your money. As your elders always say, any problem can be solved by giving money to strangers. Later, you stumble on Scott again. He seems happy. Hey, there you are, Brainsy Boy. Sorry, I'm in my, uh, my, uh, my letterman today. Your plan was a success! Who would have thought that people love receiving money for no good reason? We found the ultimate polit uh, political technique. Give money to the people for free! I wonder why money isn't free, actually. Everyone would be so happy. We might save that idea to fix the global economy in one of our future adventures. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'd, I would be super honored if you visited me and my kingdom sometime soon. Wink. Okay, I think we're on track. And then we got this. This is great. You only hope that handing out, uh, hanging around with Scott doesn't always involve giving out money for free, which has downsides you might explain to him in the future. But for now, you gain plus two, uh, uh, plus two fun and plus one smarts. Alright. I think I... Probably, I'm probably gonna need to continue to get my charm up. I think as long as my charm and my fun are up, I think I should be okay. All right, that day an epic dodgeball match takes place. Many people fall during the battle. You can't take any more, so you valiantly go straight to the other team's leader and start negotiations for a truce. After hours of intense di uh, di uh, diplomacy, all right, it just gives me charm. <laughs> You're casually reading the latest mo uh, issue of Monster Magazine when you were rudely interrupted. Let's see? <laughs> yeah, uh, well, with how he talks, it's more like I got politely interrupted. Let's see? Even Brainsy Boy, a sensible monster with a good head on his shoulders, and at least some smarts, plus smarts, is reading Monster Magazine. Yeah, and that's bad, because we're warriors, so we need to fight! Scott takes the magazine from you and punches it! Hooray! Let's go solve another of the world's major problems! No, Scott, we're social justice warriors. You see, Brainsy Boy, ever since our major success with the Fangle's goat head debacle... Wait, this is stringing along. Am I... Am I in a secret ending? Uh, we've taken it upon ourselves to stand up against injustice. 
by punching magazines. Yeah, just punch magazines. That'll help. No, Scott. As you no doubt notice, Monster Magazine's sexiest monster alive this year is Count Victor von Musselbot, the werewolf prince bodybuilder. And that makes him the fifth royal werewolf bodybuilder in a row to earn the title. What about those of us with leaner physiques? What of our representation? To be fair, Liam, you're 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 just you're just not built. I, I would imagine that if they're they're picking bodybuilders specifically for this, you you kind of gotta build your body a little bit. I, I mean, I, I feel you on the whole representation thing, but like, you put on some muscle, gotta gotta, gotta get some muscle. So now we're endeavoring to get Monster Magazine to name someone uh, more, uh, from a more mar marginalized community as their sexiest creature, uh, sexiest creature alive. Oh, is this supposed to be for sexiest creature alive? Oh, then I guess that doesn't matter as much. We just need to figure out a way to convince them, since I guess uh, since I guess punching the magazine wasn't good enough. Psh, that's easy. All you need to do to solve everyone's body uh, image issues forever is make our own version of the magazine featuring a three-winged chupacabra on the cover. Lean heavily into the warrior part. Storm Monster Magazine and hold the editor-in-chief captive until he promises to stop exclusively promoting one aesthetic as the pinnacle of monster sexiness. I'm, I'm not sure. Um, make our own version of the magazine featuring a three-winged chupacabra on the cover. That sounds creative or fun. The three-winged chupacabra thing sounds fun, but it, I think that's leaning more towards creative. Um, lean heavily into the warrior part. Storm Monster Magazine. That sounds... That's, that actually sounds bold. Um, I don't know what to do here. Um, and I'm afraid because I feel like I'm on the path for a secret ending and I'm gonna fuck it up now. Um... Hmm. I'm... Okay. Here's what my guess is. I'm gonna say that this is fun. Because... This sounds so bold. Because it's talking about storming Monster Magazine and, and holding him captive until he promises to stop exclusive... Like, that... Alright, yes, okay. Wait, creative? Creative is, oh, 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 so because, so maybe that was creative and bold? So it was gonna be a tie no matter what? That's so weird. What a brilliant idea. Three-winged chupacabras are definitely an underserved population. That's, it's my lowest statistic. I don't, okay. I played, I played sports games against someone exactly like that, and he's always wanted to be a model, but never thought anyone would want to do pictures of him. Now we can! You can, and you do! You do all the pictures and make a mock-up of your own monster game. Magazine. It goes hella viral. And before long, it's becoming more celebrated than the actual monster magazine. Pretty soon after, you get a letter from the editor-in-chief officially admitting defeat in the face of your superiority and relinquishing his magazine and headquarters to you. Sweet! Now you have a magazine, which instantly brings you plus three money. Oh, I got money. Money, money. Yeah, yeah. Oh, hi. You're back. Hey. Hey, I know you were about to move on to your next misadventure, but I want to say really quickly. As in pretty much all the girls, only girls in the school shape differently than the rest of our classmates. This is very true, actually. It was really nice to see a three-winged chupacabra celebrated over our ro a royal werewolf bodybuilder. It gives us hope too, you know. Aw, that was actually really sweet. The coven is so much cooler when they're not babbling on and on about that end-of-the-world bullshit and expecting your help with it. It was way more fun to interact with your classmates when they're complimenting you instead. Okay. Alright, well Scott's with Vera today. I don't think I need to do anything, so let's go to let's just let's just keep going with Scott. As you approach the table, you see Vera delicately uh, lifting a fork full of quinoa to her mouth. She brings lunch from home when... Food! Fork! Six! Eight! Who do we deliciate? Eating! Eating! Yay! Eating! Ugh. Ah, Scott. What on earth are you doing? I'm cheerleading you to help you be the best eater in the whole school! Ah, what caused this obsession with cheerleading me through mundane activities that require no cheerleading? 
<laughs> Everything requires cheerleading, silly. That's why we have cheerleaders for our cheerleaders. But I can see my cheerleading's not working. You haven't eaten anything yet. That's because you keep startling me with your damn cheerleading. I can't eat when I'm startled. No, that can't be it. I must not be cheerleading hard enough. Hey, friend, maybe you can help me. You shouldn't be cheering for Vera to eat the food. You should be cheering for the food to get eaten by Vera in the walk-in freezer. The problem is obviously that we aren't dressed up as a giant salad. I think I remember getting this before. And I think this one is for Vera so that he goes in the walk-in freezer and fucks off. But I'm not going for Vera this time, I'm going for Scott. So now we gotta dress up as a giant salad. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that makes sense. I mean, that makes sense. I mean, sports cheerleaders dress like giant steaks and drumsticks all the time. Or maybe that's just how they look like when I'm really hungry. Whatever, let's dress up. Luckily, the school keeps some giant vegetable costumes in the auditorium for health presentations, so you snag them and start cheering. Beats, aggressive, eat beats, aggressive. There aren't any, there aren't even any beats in a salad. It's just quinoa and the tears of my enemies. Vera's pissed, <laughs> but she does eat her salad really fast just so you leave her alone. Hooray for cheerleading! I'm sorry, Vera, you didn't deserve that at all. Alright. Um, sure. Week three, this is it. Um. What do I do? I think I give Charm Charm one more boost. And making my top stat. So that would give me 13 charm, 12 fun. I don't even think I need 12 money. Alright. Let's go. Come on, baby. After that, it's time for the most important part of the school. Visiting Scott's kingdom of furry animals as promised. When you go to the foot when you get to the forest, you find that the most of the uh, most of the trees have been decorated with beautiful, intricately drawn pictures. Of an even more muscular than life, Scott, having various kinds of sex with various different giant furry animals. Whoa. <laughs> Brainsy boy! My royal advisor, here to royally advise me. I, I might have some advice for you, dude. When I sit on- when I- while I sit on my Scott throne and rule over my Scott friends. Aren't these sweet little furry forest creatures devoted to me? It makes me- it makes my tail wag with joy. It is at this point that one of the sweet little furry forest creatures' giant head falls off, revealing a very startled-looking mummy. Yep, Vera called it. Bunch of kinky furry people doing furry stuff in the woods. I- Oh no. What- What just happened? It, is he hurt? Is my little panda friend hurt? Or- Was my panda friend never a panda friend at all? Oh no, no, no. Scott will be losing his pure joy and innocence over some furry shitty costuming skills. <laughs> Not on your watch, not today, you think quickly. Alright. You know how that, you know how deer shed their antlers and then they grow back? The talking furry, uh, furry forest creatures shed their heads. Scott, that panda must have been a cursed prince and now you've turned him back into a person. Um, I, I have no clue. Um. You know, and maybe this is creative, or is this smart? Is this, now you've turned them back. Oh, wait a minute. This might be, this might be smart. I'm guessing, because I'm guessing deer actually do shed their antlers. I don't know if that's true or not. But this is all bullshit. So maybe this is like, oh, because, oh, I see a cursed prince and now you've turned him back into a person. Oh, because he, oh, because it's, char oh, I get it. Prince Charming. That's the Charming. Uh, yep, Charm. I've heard about these kind of curses before. And I broke the spell with my love for my furry friends. As their king, of course. I don't love them in that way. Uh, they draw me loving, uh, the, the way they draw me loving them. They are very interesting pictures, though. Thanks for helping me out, Brainsy Boy. I guess I love you too, in a way. Wink. And you guess you love him too. And you love gaining plus two sm uh, fun and plus one smarts. Alrighty. I think we got it. I think we got everything we need. I think we're good to go on Scott. Let's do this. Hey, bro. Alright, yes. Um, sure. Hmm. Prom. I'm not sure, bro. Oh, come on. 
I have a kingdom to rule. Oh, it is a secret ending. Yay! And attending prom doesn't seem very responsible as a ruler. I don't know about history. Maybe some other king or queen has stopped ruling their kingdom to attend prom. I should check. I mean, I think you're the person I trust the most, and I'd love to go to prom with you, but my kingdom. Sometimes a good teammate has to make sacrifices for the team. Come on, come on, please. You know, the teammate is me, and the team is my kingdom. Oh, and the sacrifice is not going to prom with you. No! Oh, bro. I truly am sorry. Sometimes there's not enough space in one Scott for both ruling a kingdom and love. Bye. No! Scott leaves, and you swear you saw a manly cheek, uh, tear running down his cheek. It's okay. You started all this to seduce Scott, but now... You put more value on his happiness and on his pursuit of a career as king of a totally fake kingdom. What is happening right now? You stay by his side as the best furry consigliere that has ever existed. Oh my god, it got me. It got me really good. Okay. Your relationship with Scott strengthens, and in the end, his kingdom sees that. King Scott. <laughs> well, we found the thumbnail. It's a fun, fun thumbnail. So Scott thought his kingdom and love weren't compatible, yet it seems to be quite the opposite. Scott's subjects started drawing lots of suggestive art pieces depicting the two of you. Great. <laughs> Basing that explicit art made you rethink the nature of your relationship, and it ended up being closer to all that not safe for work art. Alright, we did it. Brainsy boy, most likely to survive for a year drinking only his pee. No. Always try as Scott's quote. Always try your best, and you will never lose at trying your best. And we got a new ending as a result. Yay, I'm very happy. All right, well, that does it. Let's go ahead and fast forward to the end here. All right, oh, we always have each other's rears. Oh, look, and it's it, yay. They ended up together in the end. All right, we've unlocked four new images in the gallery, and that means I have finally completed all, well, not all six endings. I've heard that there's way more endings than that, but at least I have romanced all six of them. We've done it. This means we can finally move on to some secret stuff, which I'm probably gonna need some help figuring out a bit, but I will definitely get those video out, uh, videos out when I can. And then, um, Ashel will actually be recording with me tomorrow, um, and, uh, we'll be doing some more episodes of Monster Prompt. So thank you all so much for watching. I'm, I'm glad this was a successful one, and we got another secret ending out of it, so I will see you guys next time. Goodbye. Good night. And, uh, well, I guess, um... Brainsy boy and uh, good old Scott. I'm gonna enjoy their nice um, uh, furry love in um, Rule 34. That's what the internet's for. That's what it's for.